Manipura, the beautiful district, headquarters of the Garo Hills. The new state of Meghalaya holds its first legislative assembly meeting here. The council has 38 members with Professor Radham Singh Lingdo as the speaker. On 15 December 1969, the Union government announced the Assam Reorganization Meghalaya Bill that gave the Hill State full statehood. In 1971, the Northeast Reorganization Act came into fruition, whereby Meghalaya became a full-fledged state. It received the assent of the President on the 30th December 1971. A Hill State called Meghalaya was born. Inaugurated on 21st January 1972 by Mrs. Indira Gandhi, Meghalaya was now free to chart its own independent course within the Indian Union. Meghalaya and Manipur go to the polls for the first time as full-fledged states. In Manipur, combined opposition parties gain majority. The Congress emerges the largest single party. In Meghalaya, the ruling All-Party Hill Leaders Conference has bagged the largest number of seats. So how do we narrate the story of Meghalaya? Meghalaya once again elects Captain How does one narrate the story of the making of Meghalaya? Where does one begin? Do we begin with values of self-governance that the communities indigenous to these hills have lived with for aeons? What is culture? Does it mean dress or eating and drinking? If it means eating and drinking, or ways of living, the hill tribes can claim that they have a better system than some of the people of the plains. I think the latter must rise up to their standard. Among the tribesmen, there is no difference between caste and class. Even the rajas and chiefs work in the fields together with their neighbors. They eat together. Is that practice in the plains? So, that is the culture of the hill tribes. India should rise to that feeling or idea of equality and real democracy which the tribal people have. We inhabited these hills in our own patchwork of independent polities, with our own culture, tradition and laws. For a major part of British rule, the tribal areas of the Northeast were part of the larger East Bengal and Assam administrative divisions. And yet the British colonial disruption of our autonomies could not erase our identities and political desires. Indian independence brought its own anxieties for the hill communities. The fear of being overwhelmed, unheard and unrepresented. What would our position within India look like? Rather than accept the post-colonial arrangements as a given, we articulated multiple visions about our future. On one hand, there was the guarantee carried within the sixth schedule of the constitution, which established autonomous districts within the larger province of Assam. On the other hand, a separate hill state. The debates were fiercely and democratically articulated. Protests, argumentation, newer organizations, newer visions. Captain W.A. Sangma convened a meeting at Shillong in June 1954 and gave a rousing speech. Pungani aru chelchakani maamung chol rang dongcha. Warang ko mangrakir pungna nang nukanian tribal mande sa kanchi ni kaok sinyonga. Unigman makangchi na kenchakani ganang. Yako na meraki uyoba chingni asamis jong adarang antangtani gisikko dung thangat na manjaude hill state ko rak keda bienagre kapan chol dongcha. Mai na uachi san mang mang chingat chingni tribal ongani ko. But why demand a state? Why carve out the hills from Assam? If you ask the indigenous leaders, they would have said for the protection of land, identity and history. They saw the larger cultural community trying to impose Assamese as an official language on the tribal areas in 1960. 
they found an inequitable distribution of development and already a disregard for traditional land use and customs. It seemed that people who were larger in numbers could ignore the numerically small. Maybe the story can be about the newer alliances which came into being against the hegemonic Assamese language bill. These alliances demanded the reorganization of Assam in a way that allows tribal people to gain control over their resources and land. They began with the usual democratic tools of memorandums and meetings with the central government. But finding apathy in Delhi, the APA Chelsea began the non-violent direct action whose volunteers were responsible for organizing non-violent protests that took place outside the Assam Secretariat in Shillong and other places as well. Singing their songs and vocalizing their slogans of a hill state, this people's movement was historic, highly popular and peaceful. So is the story then about mass mobilization, people's participation and the refashioning of the ideas of a constitutional democracy? This people's struggle tasted its first real victory. On the morning of 11 September 1968, the Union government announced the creation of an autonomous state for the hill areas. A hundred thousand people come to the inaugural celebrations of the new state. The governor, B.K. Nehru, told the state legislative assembly, seldom have such far-reaching constitutional changes been brought about with so much goodwill and understanding. Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, flew in from New Delhi for the celebration. gives the inaugural address. I would also like to thank the members of parliament and the political leaders at the center and in Assam who made it possible for the reorganization... Autonomous merely in name because the state would still be within the administrative confines of Assam. Although the APHLC agreed to consider it, there were others like late Bar Hoppingstone Lingdo and yes, several sections of the public who were wary of this. In October 1969, more agitations were held in the front of Assam Secretariat in Shillong. Once the people have found their democratic desires, nothing can challenge their destiny. Make 